What is up guys, Tech James here. Hopefully all of you are doing well. In this video, we have got some really exciting and interesting news. I'm sure all of you have heard of and know the Daedalus X64 emulator, and basically a Nintendo 64 emulator made for the PSP, but you could play it on the PS Vita if you had the Adrenaline emulator. Well, the really cool thing is, this emulator has actually been turned into a VPK file, which means it can be installed on the PS Vita, and we no longer need to use the Adrenaline emulator every time we want to try and play Nintendo 64 games. Now I said try and play because they're not exactly 100% playable. You can play the basic games like Mario 64, but when you try and run a game which has got quite a lot of detail and graphics in, you might encounter quite a lot of sound issues and texture issues, but the exciting thing about this new VPK is there are many features added and there are many fixes. So in this video we are going to install it, we're going to check it out, I'm going to play some games. Now I've got to be careful of what games I play, Nintendo have really been going after my channel recently and I'm gonna make an update video telling you guys about that because it's actually really annoying um, but yeah we're gonna check it out in this video so obviously all you need to start off with is make sure you have custom firmware installed I've just got Hencore it doesn't even matter what version your PS Vita is running as long as you've got some kind of custom firmware you can install this VPK and play it completely fine so what we're gonna do is we're going to launch up Vita shell now you can either use USB connection like me or you can use an FTP server I just use USB connection because it just takes seconds you know it's easier just plugging it in so what we're gonna do we're gonna press select we're gonna connect it via USB and what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy across the emulator and we're also going to copy across our game Okay guys, so here it is. This link is going to be linked in the description of the video and here it is, the release of Daedalus X64. I still don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Some people say I am, some people say I'm not, so I'll just say it what I think it is. And it was released Friday, May the 1st, so, oh, I'm not actually too late. This was only released um, maybe a few hours ago. Um, so here it is, version 0 0.1. So obviously you can expect some bugs, expect some glitches. It's not going to be 100% perfect, but it's going to be better than what we had before. So there is a description, maybe I'll just read a bit of it. It's a port of Daedalus X64 to the PS Vita and PlayStation TV. Daedalus X64 was an experimental N64 emulator for Linux and for the PSP. Its target was speed over accuracy, which I guess was kind of true, and some games were very, very glitchy. I remember playing Pokemon Stadium um, on my PSP, and just all of the textures were missing. It was insane. So what they're doing is building a new Nintendo 64 emulator, um, and its best compatibility possible without sacrificing speed. Now that's sounds very good. The emulator is being built up through combined work of this guy. So this is made by Rini Gata. Oh god, I really hate pronouncing these usernames. Not because they're bad, just because I completely butchered them. Rini Gata Manti. Oh, I hope that's right. And Mr. Fitz. I think that's right as well. Um, first implying the Daedalus X64 3DS will stay on par with the Vita build, most likely, and vice versa. So there's loads of features here. Working save states, native resolution. I don't know if it says anything. Oh, audio support. That'd be interesting to check out. Rumble support, that, oh, that's really cool, actually. And support for multiple controllers on PSTV, that's insane. Um, special controls, oh, there's also touch controls now. Obviously, the PSP didn't have a touch screen. The PS Vita does, so touch controls is very interesting. Compatibility list, um, also the credits for everyone. Big shout out to everyone that helped with this. I know thousands of people are gonna be really happy about this emulator. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna download it, get it set up, and let's see what it's like. As I said, make sure to check out their work. Massive shout out to everyone that was involved with this and we need to download it so on um, Vita DB that looks like the main download page we're going to scroll down I'm actually going to download two files we need to get a VPK but we also need to get the data files so we're just going to click on both of these wait for them to download and when it's done it should only take a second by the way and when it's done we can go to our downloads folder Okay, so in our downloads folder, we're going to have the VPK. Now the VPK, that's just the install file. So once that's done installing, we can delete it afterwards. So we're just going to put that on the root of our Vita. Now I've also got my ROMs. Now many people say, make sure to link download ROMs in the description. Guys, if I did that, my video would be deleted in seconds. But this emulator does actually support N64 and Z64 ROM formats, so that's good. We're also going to get the zip file and we're going to double click on it. Now inside of the zip file is just one folder called Dangerous X64. Just drag that out to your downloads folder, get all your ROMs and just go ahead and dump them in that folder. Now what we're going to do is select the ROMs again and we're just going to put those in the ROMs folder. Now I guess what we're going to do is copy this folder, we're going to go onto our PS Vita, we need to go into the data folder and just go ahead and paste this in there. This is all being pasted onto my UXO by the way, so if you are using like FTP or something just stick them in the UXO folder. 
And there you go, once that is copied, what we can actually do is go ahead, we can install this VPK, and let's just see what it's like. Now, I'm gonna be very careful with playing games. Um, as I said, I'm gonna make a video about Nintendo, because they're really annoying. And um, yeah, we're just gonna see how this emulator performs. So we are back from the computer. Let's go onto the UXO. Let's scroll down and let's find our VPK file. Um, this one right here, Dangerous X64. You guys know what to do. Press X a couple of times and we're just going to go ahead and install it. Now once it's done installing, what we're going to do is just launch it up and we can see exactly what it's like. So there you go, installed very fast, which is pretty cool. And we're just going to scroll down. Let's just go ahead and find it. So there you go, that is the icon it's got. I really like the icon. There is the background as well. Similar to the um, latest version for the PSP, um, kind of the same like theming they've got. So we're just gonna go ahead, start this up, and let's test out some gameplay. Okay, so I've actually zoomed you guys in a bit just so you can see it because it's actually very small. I've seen other kind of like PS Vita emulators that are like this. I think they might change it in the future. But basically, if you just wobble your analog stick, you will actually see a PC mouse. Now, I guess it is kind of like a computer because what you do is you click left and that's kind of like your mouse click button. Um, so the first option is covered by my FPS counter. But the interesting thing is it is actually about FPS. So it's about frame limits and stuff, frame skips. If you guys want to enable this, you can just click on it. Now, we've also got graphics on here, so you can change that. You can go into graphics settings. Now, the most thing I'm interested in is actually audio. So what we're going to do, we're going to click on audio and we're going to make sure that synchronous is enabled. It might be disabled by default, so make sure to check that out. We've got input. This is for controllers, I assume. Yep, so we've got controller one, everything like that. Uh, we've got extras as well. Let's see what we've got in extras. So we've got credits, um, debugger, and hide menu bar. That's kind of interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to select a game. Um, I think we're going to try Star Wars first and we're just going to see what happens with that. Okay guys, so I'm actually back. Star Wars just didn't load at all. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to try Pokemon Stadium. I have got audio enabled, so let's just click R on it. And then what we've got to do is just wait for it. Now I've noticed one thing, um, you do have to wait a couple of seconds for a game to actually boot up. So um, I'm just going to leave it playing. Um, as you can see, since I clicked R, it probably has taken about 10 seconds already. And there you go, the game's booting up. So let's see, do the textures actually work on Pokemon Stadium or are they completely broken? And no, they actually work. Okay, so I played this on the PSP and the textures were like... They didn't even have eyes. The textures on the Pokemon was just so bad. Um, so hopefully you guys can see the FPS. We're running about 24, 19. It's dipping a bit. If we could get this at a solid 30 FPS, that'd be perfect. But hopefully you guys can see the textures on the Pokemon are actually very good. Um, does the sound work as well? Okay, so the sound still is glitchy, and I have a feeling as soon as we get into the game, the menu is going to completely glitch. Let's have a look. And... <laughs> exactly like I thought the menu is completely glitched so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna give it a full restart just in case I glitched anything and um, we're gonna try James Bond as well um, so let's just go on audio I think you might have to turn audio back on each time if you do like restart it yeah it looks like you do so let's just go on James Bond let's go and load that up hopefully I'll have some gameplay in this video even though like I said um, I'm a bit nervous about doing Nintendo gameplay at the moment um, my next video will probably be that on the channel so you go got GoldenEye Oh, this is performing very well. 60 FPS. If you can play GoldenEye at 60 FPS on the PS Vita, that would be sick. Okay, so the audio has suddenly become very choppy. This is very similar to the PSP version. I might test this on my PS TV, but I have a feeling it's still going to be kind of similar. Obviously, the PS Vita's hardware is very good anyway. Um, the weird thing is, some parts are in 60 FPS. This part's in 40, and it looks pretty good. And then some parts, like, are just in, like, 10 FPS. It's kind of strange. Yeah, the audio on this part is really choppy. Let me just turn my screen back on. Oh, you can actually just tap the screen to bring up the menu. That's kind of interesting. So as you guys can see right there, loads and loads of texture glitches. That is what we don't want. Um, so yeah, um, I'm going to say, like, even though we've still got glitches, sound issues, this emulator is a massive step in the right direction. Even though it's a bit glitchy and a bit slow and the audio is messed up, um, we can still hope to see like a lot better stuff in the future. And I also realised it's got its own FPS counter up there, so having my one um, was a bit pointless. But okay, I'm going to try and play a little bit of gameplay here. I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen, but <laughs> it's worth try it doesn't look like i'm going to be able to play much in this video oh it looks like we're loading in now so okay i'll try a bit let's just try this bit of gameplay see what happens come on let me um let me play let me play as james bond 
Okay, so we can move. We can move. It is possible. It's just... Even the controls are a bit slow. Yeah, that's... Um, it's, it's very, very slow. <laughs> I don't... Can I even shoot this guy? Or even would shoot me? I haven't played this before, to be fair. Oh, there you go. We can. So before I finish the video, I just want to give a shout out to um, the guy that made this. His YouTube account is called Rini for Fun, and I definitely recommend watching this video that's linked on VitaDB. Um, it's got quite a lot of gameplay in it for many different games, um, including like Mario 64, Zelda, and stuff like that. Like I said, if I put these games on my channel, um, Nintendo are honestly just going to attack me, and I'm going to make a video about that very soon. Um, but yeah, he's got a pretty good list of games here. He's got Mario Kart, Super Mario, um, Rayman 2, so definitely go ahead and check that out. He also played Pokemon State. I wonder how his one performed. Has it got it on the list? Maybe. Oh yeah, he did play it in the video. Wait, he's also got that texture glitch, but he did actually manage to get into a game that looks like it's working with Venusaur in it. Um, geeked up Venusaur, because he looks weird in the Nintendo 64 version. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Very cool emulator. Um, make sure to check it out if you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe. Check out the links in the description. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my next upload.